everyone, it's Thursday. As a quick recap, I'm doing a Halloween mini series where I release one new pattern every week. Last week you would have seen me do Little Spook Kitty, the little cat in a ghost costume. And this week we're doing the monster monotream made out of candy. So I am introducing you to Platycornicus. Let's get into it. All right, so as mentioned, I'll be doing Platycornicus today. It is a pattern that the internet didn't really need, but here we are. It's really cute. It's really fluffy and it's really grouchy. So this pattern is actually fairly versatile as well. If you're looking for a nice standard platypus pattern, then you can see here that it does actually turn out like a pretty standard platypus, or you could also use it as a bunyip pattern. Right, so I'm just gonna start out by very quickly drawing the shapes we'll need. As a quick update, I have decided to launch a Patreon. That way I can make written versions of my patterns available to all the lovely people who wanna support my channel. There is just one tier, it's $5 a month. So I do design sessions and free patterns on this channel. So in return for your patronage, any free patterns and any other designs I create on my YouTube that are converted to written patterns Will be emailed to you on the first day of each month. That's two to three patterns every month for just five dollars and it goes towards supporting a small designer. Me. Uh, check out the link in the description if this is something you're interested in and I hope to see you there. Of course the individual patterns will continue to be offered on my Etsy store at around five dollars each and the link to that is in the description as well. Okay so first up what we're going to do is we're going to make the main body shape which should just be a tri-colored little pyramid or a one color if you're just doing a regular regular platypus. Uh, next we're going to make the tail, which should be almost a deflated balloon type shape. Uh, third, we're going to make some little horns and some little eyebrows. So we'll do the, the sort of the head features third. Fourth, we will make the little hands and feet. Uh, and then fifth, we will make the bill. All right, let's get into it. All right, so first up what you're going to need is some yarn and some candy corn colors. So here I have orange, yellow, and white. These are all a pretty standard eight ply acrylic. Uh, you can see here I've got a stallion. Let's see if I can get that in focus for you. Uh, the marvel is the same. I've had this ball for about 10 years. I actually think it became stallion in a later, <laughs> a later iteration. Uh, we're also going to need a little bit of brown for hands, feet, and bill. Now this is a Motivira color in Ombre Delights. You could also use a sort of Fletcher's cotton. This is a, a cotton suitable for use with a four millimeter hook is I think what you really got to look out for there. But really any, like you could just use a standard brown as well. I just liked the, the color of this one. I find it really hard to find really nice browns. You will need your 3.5 millimeter hook. So as I've explained previously, even though the yarns all recommend using a four millimeter hook, I like to size down because it gives you a, a sort of a tighter stitch and it holds the shape a little bit better. So you'll need that. You're going to need your usual scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. Stuffing does not go on the desk. And you will also need a pair of 15 millimeter eyes. Now for the platycornicus, I used red, but for a normal platypus, I've used a nice soft brown, which gives it a lot of a cuter, softer look. Now for this project, you will also need a special tool here. So you're going to need a wire slicker brush. So this is a pet grooming brush that I got for about six bucks at the supermarket. Um, they are not expensive tools. You can see here's some fluff in there from my testing earlier. And I found that this brush works really well with the really cheap acrylic. It fluffs up beautifully. So you will need one of these if you want to make your creation fluffy. You can make an unfluffy version and it turns out still really cute. It's just the fluffy adds sort of an extra dimension to it. All right, that's everything. We're going to get started with part one. All right, so you're going to start with your yellow and we are going to work up a triangle shape. Okay, so we finished our base triangle there. So now what we're gonna do is work up our pyramid. So we're gonna do a couple of rows all the same just to establish a nice little base. And then we'll start decreasing as we head further up. There is a color change coming up in about six or seven rows. So have your orange yarn ready to go. But I will stop at that point and show you how to do the color change then.
Okay, so that's the yellow section basically done. So what I've done is I've stopped just one stitch before the end of that final row of 42. Uh, and what we're going to do is in that final stitch, we're going to swap to the orange. So just in case you're not familiar with it, you might, you're, you probably are. It's, been, it's not exactly a secret, but I'm just going to show you how I do my color changes. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to show you how I do my color changes. Uh, so what you do is in this final stitch of this row, you hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, hold that strand off and to the side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to complete that stitch with the orange. Easy as pie. And then we are ready straight away to just continue on with the orange in the next stitch. And we are fine to snip off the rest of that yellow like that. And then what I like to do just on the inside and just to make sure everything is nice and secure and isn't going to slip out is I tie these two pieces in a very clumsy but effective double knot. And now we know that's just not going anywhere and it's all tucked away on the inside and you can see there that it very smoothly goes from that was our final yellow stitch and then that's our first orange stitch and that's how easy it is to do color changes. All right, so now I'm just gonna continue on using the orange and, can, and complete the orange midsection. So we're about ready to finish off with the orange. We'll get the yellow out of the way. We're about ready to finish off the orange and swap to the white now. So just gonna pull over a strand here and we're gonna do the same color change that we did before. So I stopped one stitch before the last stitch on the orange again. So in a row of 30, I've done 29 of those stitches and we're gonna hook through, yarn over, pull to the side and complete the stitch with the white. And then I just always like to do the first stitch straight away to lock it into place. And we're just going to tie a little knot. So we're getting to the, the pointy end of this particular shape now. Uh, we only have a couple of rows left to go. And then we'll be done with the body. I just need to sort of own up to something here. I have clearly used a white that's of a slightly different gauge than the other two colors, which I didn't pick up early in the process, though in hindsight, I can definitely feel that it is thicker. Uh, it won't matter for this kind of project, however, because I'm going to use the wire brush to make it all fuzzy. That should not be an issue. So it's kind of one of those do as I say, not as I do kind of scenarios, but I guess it goes to show that if you don't have three that match gauge perfectly, it's not going to be a big deal. There's a lot of forgiveness in this particular pattern, thank goodness. All right, so I have stopped there after that row, and we're gonna we're gonna pimp this little guy out a little bit. And by that, what I mean is we're gonna stuff it, and we're gonna attach our eyes now before we seal it and, and make him fluffy. So, what I encourage you to do is sort of pinch it into its vaguely diamond shape and pick which side that feels like the front to you. So for me, I like to use the one where the opening is in the top left-hand side, um, <laughs> left, top left-hand side, and that, make, that makes this feel like the front to me. So this is the third one of these little guys that I've made and I've used the same side each time. So maybe that just feels like the front to me, even though the, all three sides should actually be the same. So we're gonna grab our eyes so how we're we going to space them is we want them quite wide on the side or quite 
quite wide, wide apart and that's because we need to leave room for the bill in between as but we also need to leave room for like eyebrows to really form that expression on top so they need to be completely in the white part and what we're going to do is we're going to count up from the bottom so one two three so three up from the bottom is where we're going to insert them and i'm going to put mine here and we want four visible gaps between so we want one two three and four so the next one's going here all right so it looks a bit silly now <laughs> but we will transform it and I mean, if you stop now, what you've got is just a relatively harmless, lo harmless looking piece of sentient candy corn. We're going to grab some stuffing and we're going to stuff it. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to stuff him quite firmly. And we want to really encourage these three corners, particularly at the base, to really come through. It doesn't matter if he turns into a little bit of a lump on top. But we definitely want these three corners to stay fairly pronounced and we want this base to stay relatively flat. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit curved because with the tail and the feet he will balance but we want that bottom to be relatively flat. So there is our stuffed little little derp who's looking very much just like a friendly candy corn and now we're just going to close up the top of his head and then we'll move on to part two. So as you can see, we've finished off there. Uh, it doesn't matter if your eyes, sort of you can see mine are standing out a little bit from the head. That's fine. That'll be fixed when we attach the rest of his face. So this is our finished little, little base. And what we're going to do next is optional but recommended. So I'm going to take my slicker brush and I am just going to brush this little dude until he is fluffy and delightful. So what you do is you take your brush. We're just going to start brushing. You can see already that we're starting to get like a very fine fuzz. Uh, so you don't brush all in one direction. You also brush sideways and back the other way. And you brush down and you brush carefully because of the eyes up until you start getting this wonderful fluffiness. If you've got any pent up aggression, now is the time to work it out. You can brush backwards and forwards, give it a good scrub. Don't be alarmed if you start seeing a little bit of the stuffing comes out. That's just going to happen with this. This is another reason why sizing down your hook is a really good idea for patterns like this because the tighter your stitches, the sort of the less the less stuffing is likely to get pulled out by this process. Okay, so what you do from here is you continue that process on all three sides. You don't do the base. That's that's his base. He doesn't need to have a fuzzy butt and you don't need to do this little bit in between the eyes or even a little bit just over the eyes. In fact, you can leave this little rectangle square. We're going to sew stuff on. So you don't need to fuzz this bit, but do try and get the top of the head and definitely get the back of the head. All right, so I'm going to just finish this little guy off camera now. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, I have fluffed him up. I've left a little sort of pom-pom on top, but that can be smoothed down or fluffed up as I want. The base is unfuzzed. And see, we got like this very nice sort of fluffy coating. I did leave, as I, as I suggested to you, I did leave this bit unfuzzed. And I also didn't worry too much about any any of the places around, directly around the eyes, because uh, I will fuzz up the eyebrows when, we, when I make them. And that will sort of cover up part of the facial expression. So this is the brush after that. So you can, I just use a hook to sort of scoop that out. And then you'll see that we've got sort of a few yarn fibers and a little bit of polyester stuffing. So don't, don't, be alarmed if you have to pull a little hairball out. Um, the one I made previously, I had to pull twice as much out of the brush afterwards. So this happens. It's fine. It's to be expected. And what we do actually do is I save that and I use that to stuff other parts of the project. So it all just sort of feeds back into the same ecosystem. All right. So there is our fluffy little candy corn. And aren't you glad you got a wire brush and you did this because it's great. Uh, and I've also just smooshed him back into shape. He was fairly disfigured by the time I was done there. All right. So now we're going to pop that little guy to the side. And the next bit we're going to work on is the tail. So part two, the tail. We're going to work that tail completely in yellow because it does attach at this back point here in the part of the yellow section. So it's appropriate for it to also be yellow or, or whatever color. If you're doing the whole body in one color, do the tail in that same color. All right, here we go.
Okay, there's our tail. You can see it looks sort of like a deflated balloon. And what we're going to do is we are going to use the wire brush again to fluff up just the top of it. We don't need to do the, the back of it. We are going to do the top and we're going to do it around the sides. So the easiest way to do the sides is just to like hold it and brush backwards and forwards like so. All right, and then just the top. <laughs> so that's what's left of the tail after all of that brushing. So we're just gonna like tuck that away inside and pretend that never happened. Uh, but other than that, you can see that we end up with this sort of lovely fluffy, fluffy tail. There we go. So that is our tail. And we're gonna attach that there when we get around to it. Okay, so that's part one, that's part two. So part three, we get to do some eyebrows and some horns. So we're gonna do the eyebrows first, just so that we can be call it quits with the wire brush. So for the eyebrows, you're going to need whatever color you used for your head. So unlike the other pieces we've done so far, this piece is actually gonna be worked flat. So what I've done is I've chained seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then starting in the second chain from the hook, I'm just going to work six single crochet over. So then we've got this little, little lump, and then we're gonna chain one and turn, and we're gonna work a decrease first. Just like that. Then we're going to do two single crochet. And then another decrease. Like that. And another chain and turn. And then we're just going to do two decreases across the top here. And we're just going to finish that off. Leave a little bit of a tail for yourself. I'll show you why in a minute. All right, so that's, that's our eyebrow shape. It will be sewn on sort of as a little roll like that. But what we actually need to do is we're going to fluff this the same as the body. But first we need to weave these ends in in such a way that they are not going to get in the way of the wire brush. So what I like to do is work my way through stitches in one direction and then double back and work through stitches in the opposite direction. Uh, and that I found tends to be a very effective way to just really lock it in. So you see I've gone two stitches that way and then we're just going to turn it over and I'm going to go back this way. And maybe one more here. You'll see it's not, an <laughs> it's not exact, it's not precise, it's just about hiding that end nicely. And then we're going to trim that one off so it's not too long. Get rid of that. And then we've got to do the same thing with this little tail as well, which I do wish I'd left a little bit longer. So, so that's our eyebrow from the front. So it's going to be fit, as I said, as a little roll over the top of the eye. We'll play with some expressions in a minute. <laughs> but now I just need to make a second one of those. So there we go. There are our two eyebrows. And now I'm just going to clean the yellow fluff out of this. It's kind of like candy floss. <laughs> There we go. And now these are really easy. So you just give them a grip and you brace yourself and hope it doesn't hurt too much because the wire bristles and just give it a good scrub like you're brushing your teeth. So once again with these, we only really want to fluff up one side. So there we are. So there's one fuzzy little worm. So what you got to do is just sort of check that they loosely match and that one isn't extremely fluffy or the other isn't very fluffy. And once you've got two matching ones that you can barely see there, <laughs> Um, I might pull in the pumpkin for a, for a handy dandy, a little bit of assistance here. So there we go. You can see we've got two, Let's, they're both puffing outwards. And now I am just going to pin them into place on this little guy. Now you can have a lot of fun with the expression here. So you can see in the original design that he has quite a furrowed, aggressive, angry brow, or really it's more of a, more of a bored look than anything else. So let's just try that on for size here. You have to kind of arrange the fluff as you go as well. <laughs> so if it's hanging over the eye, you, you brush it out the way and you can give it even a little trim. So there we go. So we've got like a, a bored look or if you just move, you can go for a way more evil look just by like making that angle harsher like that. Or you can go for sort of a, I'm a poor cute baby. Why are you doing this to me? kind of look by tilting them downwards like that as well. So I personally love the board look where I'm actually kind of just going for like that straight line across that. So that's the facial expression I'm going for. And while I'm here, I'm also just going to pin on the tail as well, fuzzy side up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it up against the body like that. One pin there should hold it on nicely. So he's starting to come together a little bit now. So next up we have some horns. 
This is a step you can skip entirely if you are just doing a regular platypus, but because Platycornicus has little horns, we need to make them. Uh, all right, so this one here doesn't start with a magic ring. It is worked kind of in a spiral, but it's not a magic ring. So just if, I might just walk through this, this as well. So you see that I've started with a regular slip stitch and I'm going to chain two. And now in that second chain from hook, I am going to put three single crochet in there. I found that working with a magic ring doesn't give you a nice point on the end. Whereas like starting this way, you can get a nice pointy horn happening, which is good. All right, so now you've got sort of a three single crochet. You can notice that I've sort of folded that over a little bit to make it a spiral. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, in this first, next one, I'm gonna just do a little increase. Or a regular sized increase. I have a tendency to attach the word little to things when I think they're cute. So an increase and then two single crochet. Like that, and then we're gonna do another increase here. And three single crochet. Make sure you pick up both loops on those crochet as well. It gives it a little more structure. So there is our first little horn. Now we do need to just address the little loose thread at the top. I'm just going to finish this off real quick. So that's finished. And then we're going to just reach our hook back up inside and just very gently so as to not flatten that point out. We're just going to hide that end inside and make sure that that horn still still stands upright. And then you have a nice pointy little horn. Dig through the fluff a little bit. That's going to go there. And we just need another one now. So you'll note that I'm pinning things on as I go and that's just because there's so many tiny little pieces that I don't want to lose any, as well as the fact that like, it's sometimes it's really fun just to watch it slowly assemble, as opposed to ending up with a pile of pieces that you then have to sort of jigsaw together. All right, so that is step three complete. We've done the eyebrows and the horns. So next up, we are gonna do both little lots of feet. So I mean, I'm working with just the very last of this ball. And I thought this was a nice chocolate color and I thought that would go very well with our candy theme. Why are you like this? There we go. Alrighty, so I'm going to start with the back feet. Okay, so that's the first two rows of the foot done. So we've worked up to 12 stitches all the way around. And so what we're going to do to make the toes is I don't know if there is a name for this kind of stitch. So I'm just going to walk you through it one step at a time. So uh, here we go. So first of all, we're just going to do six single crochet to make the back of the foot. Why are you like this? It was behaving yesterday. I don't know what's gotten into it today. Anyway, all right, so we've done six around the back and now we're going to make the first toe. So in this next stitch, what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet once. Then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to single crochet again in that same stitch. Like that creating this very cute little point. Then we're just going to single crochet in the next one. And then after that, we're going to repeat it again. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch. And then a single crochet in the next. And for the third and final one, we do the same thing again. So single crochet once, chain two, and then single crochet again in that same stitch. And then again in the last stitch left in that round. So you see it gives us this sort of vague point to it, which almost looks kind of like a little webbed foot in my opinion. All right, so the next row, we are gonna work six single crochet again, just to get back around to where we started. <laughs> All right, so here's another sort of mystery stitch for you. Um, so we're going to work a decrease now um, over that over that little toe. So that, that toe is a single crochet, two chains, and a single crochet. We're just going to decrease in the back loops, which means the loops closest to, to us, uh, of those two single crochet of that toe. So I've got that loop. I'm skipping those chains, and then I'm going to pick up the back loop only of that toe. 
I'm going to finish that decrease off. Uh, I'm just going to single crochet regularly through that one there from the previous round. For the next toe, we're going to decrease again. So back loops only through the single crochet, missing the chains entirely, closing and a single crochet in that one there. And then last, we're going to decrease in those the back loops of those two and finish off and then do that that final stitch so there you see we have this lovely pointy little toad flipper now because of the way we sew these on they are allowed to have sort of a good side and a bad side just going to work some decreases around if you find that they're too hard it's it's genuinely fine if you find they're too hard they're too small just finish off here and you won't even be able to see it when you sew it on. Okay, so if you give it a little pinch, it'll make those two little chains form extra pointy. So that's one little foot done. Take a minute to unravel this yarn again. Uh, so that's one foot done and now I'm just going to quickly whip up a second. All right, there we go. I'm just tucking in the little end there like that. Okay, now this is a triangle. So we've attached the tail at the back point. Now these little feet, you can do them so that they stick out if you prefer that. I personally like the little sitting down little womp position. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now onto the hands. So in the same same color that you've chosen, same brown, uh, the hands are basically smaller versions of the feet. So here we're doing that same stitch again to create three of the toes. So I'm putting one single crochet into the stitch. I'm chaining two, pulling those chains quite tight, by the way, and then a second single crochet into the same stitch. And then rather than have one in between, we're just going to do the same thing again immediately in the next stitch. So one single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch. And a third time, one single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet in the same stitch, like so. <laughs> And then the decreases work the same way as they did on the feet as well, where you just pick up the back loops of the two single crochet that make that were put into the same stitch. You skip the chains in between. Cotton is lovely and soft to work with. and I do appreciate it. Like I do like it, but it has this tendency to just like unravel in the most annoying, obnoxious way. not a fan so those tails and tucking those ends into the into the mitt should be all the stuffing that the little hand needs and we're just going to pinch those three little fingers again so there we go so that's one just going to quickly whip up a second uh so there are our two little mitts two little two little hands and as per the reference image i'm just going to pop one on each side like this and our little dude is nearly done so he's looking very fluffy and very appealing. And now we just gotta add his little beak. Okay, and now we're gonna use more of our brown to make the fifth and final piece, the bill. <laughs> now this piece is a little bit fiddly, so bear with me and I will walk you through it. Alrighty, so we're gonna start out with a magic ring of five. Okay, and then everything is pretty normal for the next two rows. So you end up with this little five-sided shape, this little pentagon. And from here on out, things get a little bit, like I said, just a little bit fiddly. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put three single crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch. Now, in terms of this, the back is where the tail is. Uh, and so the front is facing away from me. So the back loop is this one and the front loop is this one. So I'm going to put three single crochet in there. 
one, two, and three. Then I'm just going to do a single crochet in the next stitch through just that front loop. Now the reason that we're working in front loops here is because that's the bit that's going to fold up and sit flat against the face while the rest of it is going to stick out at an angle. So in doing using the front loops, we actually are making almost like a little hinge. Oh, sorry, I'll twist it the way you can say it. We're almost making like a little hinge shape. All right, so in the next front loop, we're going to put three more single crochets. So we've gone three in one, one in one, and we're doing three in one again. So one, two, three. Then we're going to put a single crochet in the next one. And then we're going to do three in the last one. One, two, and three. Okay. All right, so that gives us our, our little nose piece. I'll give you a little, give it a little tilt so you can see what I'm on about. But that's not much of a bill yet. So the, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to complete the round. So we've done the first five stitches and then we have 10 remaining and we're going to put a single crochet in each of them. So you can see already it's starting to pull in, get a nice little curve to it, but we're not done with the trickery yet. All right, so the next stitch we're going to do, slip stitch into that next stitch there. And then we are going to chain one and we're going to turn. All right, so from here the trickery continues and we're going to start having to work in back post. Now a back post stitch, just so that you, just as a quick grounding in all the different stitches. So... We know this is the back of the piece, it has the tail. That remains the back of the piece even when it's facing away from us. So working around the post, so with the stitch you can work around the front loop, the back loop, both loops, or you can work around the post of the stitch itself. So this first one's the trickiest one and then the rest after that get really, really easy. So you insert your hook, through again, carefully pull up that loop because it will try and tie itself in and not just because we're working backwards like I said the next ones are all easy uh, and then complete the stitch so that's the first one and we're going to do 11 of those around so watch how easy the next ones are after that first one I'm trying to give you lots of different angles So basically what back post means is that you insert from the back. It's four. So that's 10 and then we just need one more for 11. All right, so as you can see here, the reason we work in, in back post is that it gives us this really wonderful sort of very sharp line uh, and you can use that as a construction technique to give your and you can use that as a construction technique to you to, to give your your animals sort of hard corners or you can use this now as see if we can use this set of loops or that set of loops and we can grow out in two different directions we're not doing that today don't worry uh, but like it's really really handy in terms of putting down a foundation or giving your your work hard edges because we all know crochet doesn't like hard edges very much all right, so now that, that little nightmare is over, <laughs> deep breath, you did it. Uh, and I'm gonna chain one and turn back again. And we're just gonna put a single crochet in that first stitch, working through both loops now. Everything goes back to being fairly normal and then we're just gonna do five decreases around. All right, so we've reached the end of that row. I've chained one again and I'm just turning and this is the last row where we're just going to put in three decreases. Yeah, I'm really new to this whole uh, video tutorials, video anything <laughs> thing. So uh, any feedback any of you have would be very, very greatly appreciated. All right, and then we're just going to finish off. You're like... And I bet you're like, that's a really strange looking piece. Why have we made it look like that? That's silly. Well... If you look at it now, uh, from the side, it looks like we've got a top bill and a bottom bill all in one piece. And I think that's a really cute look. And then we've also got this little, oh, it fell, little flappy bit at the front to attach the face to. So if I'm just going to pin that in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it flat against the head completely. Oh, goodness, that's adorable. Um, <laughs> we're going to hold it flat against the head, though this is not what it's going to look like in the end. Uh, we're going to start with a pin in the center beak and then a pin on the side. 
and then a pin on the other side as well. Now those side pieces should fall in the center of your eyes. If you want it to look specifically like mine, you can have your eyes as far apart or as close together as you like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold this bit up. Uh, when we go to sew this on, we're going to stuff a little bit of stuffing in there. Let's see if I can get that in there now. And oh, hey, look, look who's back. It's from the brush. Nothing's wasted. There we go. I'm going to fold that up like that. And then we're going to sort of bend it at like a 90 degree angle. Pin and pin. And there is, I'm just going to flatten out some of that stuffing a little bit just to make sure it sits properly. Give it a little mush around. And there he is. So nothing's been sewn on yet, but that's our little dude. Now, there isn't any specific tricky way to sewing these things on. In terms of color matching, I would encourage you to use yellow. When sewing on the horns and the tail, uh, tail is an easy one, um, just because it's more likely to show on the horn than it is in the fluff. Uh, when sewing on the feet and the beak, match it to the brown, in my opinion, just because you're more likely to see stitches coming up on the brown than you are to see them going into the body. We have been pinning as we go. So the, the assembly steps from here are really just to sew the pieces on. Okay, so I'm going to pull out my needle, which is here somewhere. There it is. Ha ha. Oh, don't look at me like that. You're going to be fine. And so first things first for the eyebrows, I'm going to use white. And the way I'm going to sew these on is like, the way I'm going to sew these on, the trick to working with this fluff is to comb it completely out of the way as best as you can. Uh, and then for the eyebrows, sew from the outside edge here all the way along to the inside edge there and don't bother trying to put any stitches across this middle bit. It can be free to sort of move around a little bit so you can adjust their expression slightly, but really there's no point. So the idea is that we start in this corner, we sew around to the middle and then we stitch down that corner. And then for this eyebrow, ah, I stabbed myself. Um, <laughs> that is a dangerous pin. Um, and then for this one here, we start in the middle corner to minimize the yarn wastage and we work around the outside to the uh, furthest out corner and then then that should be enough to secure those eyes down so I'm gonna just do that now so taking extra special care to really fasten down that inner corner then you can just go straight across to the other one so you can see here that that inside edge isn't fastened down at all, so I can go super sleepy with it, or I can wake him up a little bit. So you get a little, a little bit of posable expression by sewing on the eyebrows this way. And you can see that some of the fuzz is getting flattened under the stitches. You can go through with your hook or your needle and just like pick it out a little bit. Okay, every pin I can take out makes this a little safer for me to handle, so that's good. Uh, and I'm just going to make extra sure to have fastened down that corner as well. So paying extra attention in the corners. Just pull that all the way through. All right, and there's a few sort of little fat, flat, a few little flat areas. I'm just going to pick to make sure that the fluff is doing what it should. Okay, so next up is this magnificent beak. All right, so using a little bit of your brown, what we're going to do is we're going to start in this corner here, making sure that that corner is fastened down firmly. We're going to stitch up this edge and make sure the middle point is fastened down. And then we're going to stitch down to here and just really secure that top piece first. And don't do that. <laughs> don't pull your yarn all the way through because you will feel silly in front of the internet. All right, let's make him a little bit safer. There we go. There we go. All right, and so the next step is to sew down the underside of this bill, which, ha! <laughs> has more pins in it uh, and to do that I literally I'm folding it up like this just so that I can see what I'm doing and I will fold it down again afterwards 
So you see on this one here, the bottom of the beak is falling right in line with the uh, bottom of the white there. You might find yours is a little bit different depending on the gauge of yarn you're using or how far up the face you decided to place your, your eyes. Uh, and that's, that's all fine. That one's pretty superfluous now too. All right, and then you just sort of fluff it up a little bit more now that, since, since I flattened it a bit. All right, like that. There we go. So now his little face is attached. And you can see that work that we did with the back post stitches just gives him a real sort of top bill, bottom bill appearance very, very easily without having to make multiple pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the feet now while I've still got the brown on the needle and then I will do all the yellow bits together because that pin is still... <laughs> still thirsty for my blood. So we're going to pin these back in place now. So I use my hook to sort of like part the fuzz, place the little hand back and we'll use the hook to part the fuzz on this side too. So that's where I want the two little hands to be and then same thing with the corner. We're just going to move it out of the way as best as we can. Like I'm not going to pretend you're going to have any sort of degree of control <laughs> over the fuzziness of this little guy but uh we can do our best. All right, and just put those feet back where they go. So when it comes to sewing these limbs on, I found that uh, the best way to approach the hands is just to sew sort of around the back a little bit and leave the little hand flaps kind of free to sort of move around a little bit. Uh, and then the same with the feet. See how the, the bottom of the foot hangs off the body a little bit? So in, the, in that case, we're just going to sew sort of a line across there, up a little bit, and maybe a line across there as well. So leave the toes and the bottom of the heel kind of free. You don't need things overly secure, just secure enough that they won't fall off or be a choking hazard depending on who this is going to. And that's a wrap on the brown. Okay, so this is where we're up to so far. And don't forget that this is still pinned on, not, not sewn on. So he's got all four feet and his little bill. All right, so next up, I'm going to sew the tail on. To do that, we're going to go back to using yellow. I'm starting with the underside because it's so much easier to stitch on without the fluff. <laughs> Right, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to see how I'm folding this down. I'm just going to take that pin out. We've stitched on the underside, so the pin is no longer needed, thank goodness. I'm going to brush the fuzz out of the way and making sure that we're catching the top layer of the tail because you can see there's a top and a bottom. We're catching the top layer of the tail and securing that down now. We go and that's just not enough left to sew the horns on so I'm gonna have to sacrifice this little scrap as well there we go all right tail is on now so I'm just going to very carefully pin them comb the little fluff out the way and pin them back into place they are the most fragile piece so it does actually make the most sense to leave them till last that's better okay that's one hold that for me buddy there you go so that's gonna be what he looks like in the end I'm just going to sew these on really quick. And there he is, your very own little platycornicus. They work up really, really quickly, making them perfect for last minute, I don't know, I don't know, last minute presents for the weirdos, you know. <laughs> Right, well that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you, you learned some things and I hope that you're going to have a go at making either the platypus or the, the more monstrous individual. All right, so that is the second out of the five designs I will be doing. I still haven't picked the, the next three yet, but by the time this goes to film, I would have filmed at least one more. 
So if you want to have a say in what the last two designs are going to be in this series, you need to get on over to that brainstorm video and you need to watch it and you need to let me know in the comments over there or, or here which one you want to see. And we almost lived in a world that didn't have monster monotremes made out of candy. Guys, like this is this is real. This is this is serious stuff. All right, so if you don't want to miss the next three, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified when it comes out. And if you like this one, please hit the like button, not because it's going to get you anything, but because it makes me feel good. All right, I will see you all next week. This same pattern out of brown, what you get is an impossible shadow. Don't mind him, he's just sad because he's never in focus. Okay, bye.